This is not the video I wanted to be making. puzzle that I'm trying to find a resolution to is the sort of living area seat benches. They haven't been trimmed down yet or anything, so there's there's overhangs everywhere. But they they hinge up like this. Uh, there's currently no gas struts or anything. But um, all I've done is I've used piano hinges, or I think they're called continuous hinges. That's that's sort of what they look like down there. The central bit is braced so that you know this this doesn't become a weak point. I have stood here, sort of bounced around a little bit, and um, it withstands my weight. Well, the thing I'm trying to uh, work out at the minute is actually the front here. I'm not just going to stick a, a single sort of sheet of ply or whatever on the front of there. I have to split it into two and there's a reason why. If we look at this one, there is this here. Now it's not a drawer, this is just a fascia, but there is a gap here because I'm actually going to have runners coming out of here. I've made a little like template for Emily to fill in, but this is going to be our table. The reason why it has to be so thick is because it's going to sit in here between the seats at that level. For it to sit there, it needs to sit on something. I either need to have something flip down from the underside of the table, or I need something to pull out from the seating. And that's what I've gone with. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have runners, heavy duty runners, come out of this section here just one in each corner that bridge this sort of gap so that we can put this down. That way the sofa can be like converted into a bed. That's what I'm going for at the minute and that is the latest issue, <laughs> the latest Rubik's Cube that I've got to try and figure out. I'm going to have to create some kind of supports or whatever for the, uh, for the runners to actually sit on. But realistically speaking it only needs to be supported in the front corners because that's where the weight is going to be that's where the weight's going to be distributed so the bit that i'm working on today is the bed the actual base is 170 wide by 182 long our actual mattress size is 160 wide by 182 long so it just gives us a 10 centimeter gap either side of the bed um, for the mattress to compress and move for our duvets to be able to be tucked down and what we've decided to do is to get some ikea i can't remember what they're called ikea long set slats we have them on our bed at home they're very comfortable but for us to be able to get the 170 width that we need we actually bought two different slats so we've got one that's 90 centimeters wide and one that's 80 centimeters wide and that will take us up to the 170 width that we need but because our bed is shorter than the average bed um i'm having to cut them down so i've measured here just a really faint line that is the 182 line so i want to cut off this side so we're gonna have to remove one of these which the slats go into i'm also gonna have to drill two more holes which the cross beam goes into. So I'm just gonna use a flathead screwdriver to pull these staples out and then try and replicate where these holes are. I 
Um, so this is the bit that I've just sawn off. It's got the two holes here that the, um, the brace goes into. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is use this as a template. So I'm just gonna line it up on the end, use a pencil um, and literally just go through. Like that, and then it will leave two marks on the piece of wood. So that's uh, both beds all done. Fixings have just arrived to be able to pin down the bed, the bed frame that's in the van. Um, so we've nearly got a bed, and the mattress is arriving next week. So exciting. Fortune has become a little bit of a balancing act actually get around in our days. I wanted to quickly show you, before I did too much more, quickly show you how I'm putting together the bed. Um, so this is, um, these are the scorver beams, which uh, obviously come in very handy, but then we've got uh, extruded uh, aluminium extrusion along the side. So these are really super easy to attach. They come like this, you unscrew this part here, and then you're left with two parts. This part here, which is sort of like, it's not a nutset, but it's sort of similar. And as you can see, just there, there is like an indent. And then within this part, within that hole, if I then screw this, you'll see a little spike appearing. That punch centers in that hole there. They're engineered to be in the exact right place and, uh, and it brings it all together and tightens it up. And then this is what these look like once they've been set in. That one that's set in there is actually in this position and it's been slid down there. You might be able to see it at the end. And it's just just in there. What it does is when you, when you tighten that up, it pulls these together and squeezes it so that that is a really, really solid join. I'm gonna slide it down there so it's the other side of the wheel arch box and then replace this part with the uh, 4080 instead. But that's not going to be entirely self-supporting because it's only attached on two corners. It needs to be attached at the bottom or uh, what I'm doing is bolting it to the wall. We've got some battens specifically in place for this and what I'm having to do because we hadn't anticipated that the, where the bed comes up to actually is where the side of the van starts curving. That's problematic because it means that the bed frame, if upright, actually stands away from the wall ever so slightly, like the legs stand slightly away from the wall. So what I've had to do is come up with an idea where I use some um, angle brackets meant for roof joining, and I've done this. What I've done here is I've used a combination of T-nuts and six mil bolts and a spreader plate on this side to utilize the hole that's in the middle rather than the ones that are at the edge. That means there is a little bit of movement and I've got sort of like an adjustment space where I can adjust how far out this is and ensure that the where the leg comes up is actually sort of true and plumb as true and plum as a van can be, but you get my idea. What we'll then go on to do is, uh, these are already screwed in, they're the uh, IKEA score of the beam mounting brackets. Then I'm gonna put the score of the beams onto these in between the two aluminium bits. Moment of truth, see if this works. So it's currently just clamped in place. In theory, I should be able to just push these down. I'm gonna pull it slowly, because it's just clamped in. And there you go. 
obviously there's, there's going to be a table here. This is just the frame for the table. But yeah, I'm happy with that. Good height, I think. It seems flat, which is good as well. Now let's get it fixed in. What I'm using is these joist hangers. These are adjustable joist hangers. So they come in two parts rather than one part that looks like a U shape, you get one of these. And I thought maybe if I try and cut it down ever so slightly so it's not overhanging. And I think I'm probably gonna use them that way. I think this will have more grab on it. I could do it that way and then the, I don't know, if I do it this way, the these holes will bolt through the scorver beam and then the the beam for the runner will sit on top of that like that or i could do it like that so this is sitting on the top of the the scorver beam what i could do Light bulb. is do that on one side and then on the other side do that that might work because it will give me Stability where it's pulling on the top of the scorver beam rather than through the screws, but also on the other side of the scorver beam, it'll be it will support the bottom of the the runner beam rather than relying on these screws through here. So yeah, I might do that actually. I've got enough of them, I think. I ordered like a pack of ten, but we'll try that out. So final clamp coming off. So that is now completely self-supporting it's not going anywhere which is good so hopefully this should just run out nice and smooth not get caught on anything good so far and then it should slide back and clicks into place I'm super chuffed that that didn't take so long because everything has taken so so long I've now got to just shave down the actual table insert because there's a big hole through this so this is just the frame and I'll demonstrate that later on once we get this sort of area sorted chuff with that and to be perfectly honest if I only achieve that today I I'm happy because I thought this was gonna be a long 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 process yet again it is raining so I am completing something on my list of things to do today that requires me to be inside to do it. So, we're going to tackle the toilet. <laughs> so this is what we're talking about here. It is a plinth on some locking runners that go into this sort of cubby here, which will be our sort of toilet box. The fan and filter and stuff like that will, will come out of this side bit. There will obviously be a, a door on the front of this, however, this is where the toilet is going to be mounted and where it's going to pull out to, to be used. So what we're looking at here, it's like a, a mini household toilet. It looks really modern. Seat comes up as normal, sort of springs up like that. And then the 12 volt fan is underneath. Now the good thing about this as well is that it comes with tiny little feet that you flip out under here. So what I've got is some of this stuff. I think what it actually is is draft excluder, but it is used, I know it's used in the cabinet making industry. So what I'm gonna do with it is place it just inside here on this lip so that when we push the table in, if there's anything like crumbs or even liquid to be fair, if there's anything on top of the table, it's, it's gonna keep it this side and it'll drop down the front rather than it going past the back and then potentially dropping onto all the electrics. Um, so that way I'm sort of keeping the, the electrics safe if you like. <sighs> this is not something I wanted to be recording. Yesterday, or last night, late last night, we made the decision to delay the departure, delay our ferry, and when we were going to go to Europe. We're not ready. To be honest, we're not even close to ready. There's fundamental things that we still need in the van that are missing, that really are not luxuries. They are basics, and we still haven't got it fitted. We've got none of our plumbing under our sink, and our 
diesel heater is stuck in Germany. We haven't even drilled the holes in the floor for the diesel heater or the sink, like the plumbing. We've had so many issues with the electrics, mainly the like cable run lengths and connections and things like that not working as anticipated. Fortunately enough, most of it's in. I, I ran all the 240 volt the other day and I got that certified and signed off, so that's all done. At the end of the day, we can do it on the road. We, we just don't want to do it on the road. If we were having to bog ourselves down with building out, like finishing the van, then it would have meant that we didn't actually see any of those places that we went to, which would have been a massive shame. It also would have been really uncomfortable building the van whilst living in the van when there are such fundamental things that need doing. So we wouldn't have had heat overnight, we wouldn't have had water. It, it just would have meant the entire experience would have been tainted slightly. So rather than do it on the road and be uncomfortable and not see the areas that we wanted to see, we decided that instead we would delay for one month and we would still move out of our property because we've we've got somebody moving in we still have to move out but we're going to move in with somebody else just temporarily thankfully they they are away so we're going to be using their house and their garage for a month finishing off what we need to finish and then heading off into europe still doing the same plan we're just delaying the ferry last night was a a difficult decision. I've, I've literally been working on this van. Since I gave up work, I have not had a day off. And that sounds a bit, you know, anyone who doesn't work technically has every day off. Like, I genuinely have not stopped since I gave up work. It was almost relaxing getting the van certified because I was able to sit there and do nothing. And that was a holiday in itself for a few hours. I used to get start work at about 8, 9 o'clock, but now I'm, I'm starting work at about 6, 30, 7 o'clock, up until like 11 midnight just trying to squeeze in as much as I can and it's draining it's really really draining I found myself like losing my temper really quickly making mistakes which is probably the worst thing is making mistakes that you then have to rectify and getting irritated at your mistakes but then losing time because you've made the mistake and you have to rectify them so it's just not conducive to building a van correctly but we have a plan we have a place to go still gonna push still gonna put in the hours not gonna relax but one month one month more building and one month delay on the travel but we will get there this by no means is us giving up this by no means is us saying we're not going and we're certainly not delaying by more than a month I'm gonna work on our priorities list so I've got to get the table in so that we can get the bulkhead finished so that we can get the bed on top we have got the remainder of our electrics coming today and the electrics coming today means that I can finish off connecting up the fridge. So the fridge is going to be one of the main remaining electrical items that need to be connected because at the minute all the lights are in, our batteries are connected, our inverters connected, we've got 240 volt, we've got our hob in, we've got things like internet in, the battery protectors in, you know there's a lot of things that are in but we just need some finishing, final, big bulk items to be done. Let's crack on with that. Come on. Final push. Final push. I keep saying final push. This is, this is the final push. So, I don't know, I don't know. Oh, that is video and shit. I'm not very good at this. Use a pencil with a... Use a pencil with a... because the table actually hangs a little bit lower than the, um... Shit, yeah. Shit, I'm gonna have to test that out. Now, it's not a draw. Um... That would have been a good idea.